Hello, today I want to think about Bayes' theorem in the context of an investor. Now, Bayes' theorem is about conditional probabilities, revised probabilities. I want to think about whether or not we can use this theorem to become better, to become more successful as an investor. Before I get to the formula, let me just say that there is some controversy about out there in terms of who or what portion, which person contributed to this theorem. So I also want to point out that Richard Price, Pierre Simon Laplace, both have something to do with this theorem. Now, if we look at the formula, there's different variations of it depending on what data you have. But today I wanna to just focus on the most basic here. We have a number of different symbols here. So let's go through them. We have these two here. These are prior probabilities. So this would be the probability that A happens or the probability that B happens. But you can look at the data, right? You can say, you know, what is the probability that a stock price goes up? Or what is the probability that a stock outperforms the market? You can go back and look at the history for that stock and you can figure out what those probabilities are, right? It happens 45% of the time. You could also do that for something else. Say like, what is the probability that a stock's earnings will beat the analyst forecast? So that's what, so let's think about it in that way. That's probability of A, probability B. You go look at the data. Now we have some conditional aspect to this. These are called posterior probabilities. So this would be the probability that A happens given that B did happen, right? So what's the probability that my stock will go up given that the stock's earnings beat the analyst expectations? Now, I want you to think about this in a slightly different way to make it a little bit more just layman English terms. I want you to think about A as the outcome of interest. So you're interested in your stock outperforming. That's A. Then you also have additional information or new information. This is key here. This is where the revision comes into play. So now, given the fact that they announced their earnings and they beat expectations, now what's the new probability that my stock will go up? Now, I also want to put this into kind of Bayes' world, right? So when he was developing this theory, he had his assistant take some objects, say a little ball, and place it somewhere randomly on the table, right? So they put it, let's say here. Now he would ask the person to kind of draw imaginary lines on the table and clue him into where this ball was. Without any information at all, he would have no idea where this might be. But if his assistant were to draw a line, say here, say, hey, it's on you know this side of the table, then he would know, well, my probability of kind of guessing where it is is now in this 50% range. If his assistant then drew another line, we could say, now he could revise his kind of estimate of where that ball was over here because he's kind of narrowed down the, the space on the table where it could be. If the assistant drew another line here, you say, well, I'm going to revise my estimate again. It's somewhere in this area. And if the, the assistant drew yet another line, say, well, I'm going to revise my estimate yet again. I'm pretty sure the object is somewhere in this area. And that's what he did as he was developing this theorem. Now we can do the same thing in the investment universe or the investment world, right? So here we have a stock. We don't know anything about it. We're going to compare it to the benchmark. It has about a 45% chance of outperforming. And that's real empirical data, depending on the universe you're looking at. But in general, the minority of stocks, so less than 50% of the stocks in a benchmark outperform. That's just because stocks can only go down to zero, but they can you know, do very, very well. They could be 100% you know, return, 200% return, 300% return. So in general, fewer stocks outperform, more stocks underperform. Now we've given some new information. Hey, we say, hey, this company had some earnings that beat expectations. So now my probability increases slightly. It doesn't increase dramatically. You know, there's flaws with earning estimates. You know, earnings are highly manipulated. Maybe they beat, but not by as much as you want it. But now you have a slightly higher chance than 50-50 of your stock outperforming. Now we get some new information. We also, oh, we're learning that this company's market share declined by much more than expected. So we're going to revise our you know, probability of the stock outperforming again, and now it's gone down dramatically. Now we see in the news, hey, the CEO, he, he had a child, a child was born, and they named the child Pierre. And basically nothing happens because that's not really relevant information to the stock price. But now we get some information, hey, we, they did have this diminishing market share, that, but that's because they really focus on developing a new product. It looks like it's going to be a home run. We're going to revise our probabilities again. Say, look, this thing looks like it has a pretty good chance of outperforming the market. Now, that's what we can do as investors is actually go out there and get that data and use that formula to revise your probabilities over and over again. And then obviously, you want to choose to invest 
in those assets that have the higher probability of outperforming. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Please, please hit subscribe, hit the like button. It really does matter. Happy trading out there. And thank you so much. I'm Brian Kozlowski.